Hi and Assalamualaikum, my name is Hadira Nancy from Intimate Marisa and today I'm going to present to you guys about the AP shoulder. So moving to our first slide is the anatomy of the AP shoulder and these are all the anatomies that should be included in the radiograph of the AP shoulder. So moving next, first is the projection. So this is external rotation of an AP shoulder. So why do I say this is AP? Because the collimation included the proximal of the humerus, the lateral two-thirds of the clavicle is shown, the upper scapula is demonstrated, and the relationship of the humeral head to the glenoid cavity is included. So this is the scapula, if you cannot see. So moving next to position. So this is a position of the true AP shoulder. So these are the criteria of the true AP shoulder. So firstly is the glenoid fossa is visualized and the superolateral border scapula is seen without full thorax superimposition. This is the thorax and this is the scapula and there is no superimposition and this is the glenoid cavity that is visualized. The posterior portion of the glenoid fossa is superimposed on the medial margin of the humeral head. The superior scapula angle and mid-clavicle are superimposed. This is the superior scapula angle and this is the clavicle and they are superimposed. It includes lateral two-thirds of clavicle, proximal, one-third of humerus and superior scapula. So moving next, this is the position of the humeral head. If it's external rotation, the great is in profile laterally and the lesser tubercle is anterior and medial to the greater tubercle. So for neutral rotation, the greater is anteriorly but still lateral to the lesser tubercle. For internal rotation, the greater tubercle is anteriorly and at the medial aspect but the lesser tubercle is in profile laterally. So moving next is the wrong positioning. So this is the positioning if, uh, so this is the pos positioning if the patient is rotated toward the affected shoulder, or if the patient shoulder is placed closer to the IR. So it increased the thoracic superimposition over the scapula body. This is the scapula body and it is superimposed with the thoracic. Increased clavicular end rotates. This one, it rotates. The medial clavicular ends rotates away from the lateral edge of vertebral column. This is the vertebral column and this is the lateral edge of the vertebral column and it doesn't it rotates away. So to correct it, rotate away from the affected shoulder until both of the shoulder is equal distant to the IR. So for positioning, if the patient is rotated toward the unaffected shoulder or the shoulder is placed away from the IR, it decreases the thoracic superimposition of the scapula body. So this is the scapula body and this is the thoracic. It's still superimposed, but it is not as much as if the patient is rotated toward the affected shoulder. This is superimposed a lot, and this is just a little bit superimposition. So it decreases the clavicular ends rotate here. This one, this is the clavicle. The medial clavicular ends superimposing the vertebral column. So this is the vertebral column and this is the medial clavicular ends and it's superimposed. So to correct it, rotate toward the affected shoulder until the shoulder is equal distant to the IR. So moving next is the position if the upper MCP is tilted anteriorly. I mean like if the patient is bonko. So the super Superior scapula angle will be demonstrated superior to the mid clavicle angle. So this is the superior scapula angle and it is um, demonstrated superior to the mid clavicle. Increased longitudinal foreshortening of the scapula body. See the scapula body seems small. 
And the glenoid cavity is visualized. This is the glenoid cavity. So to correct it, straighten the MCP and align it parallel to the IR. So moving next is if the upper MCP is tilted posteriorly. So the superior scapular angle will be demonstrated inferior to the midclavicle, which is opposite than if the upper MCP is tilted anteriorly. So this is the superior scapular angle and this is the midclavicle. It is demonstrated inferior to the midclavicle. Increase longitudinal for shortening of scapular body. The scapula body seems long. The glenoid cavity is visualized. This is the glenoid cavity. So to correct it, straighten the MCP and align it parallel to the IR. So moving next, um, this is the image that I am going to evaluate. So this image is incorrect because the superior scapular angle is demonstrated superior to the midclavicle. This is the superior scapular angle and this is the midclavicle. So the superior scapular angle is demonstrated superior to the midclavicle. And increase longitudinal foreshortening of the scapular body. The scapular body seems manjang or membujuk. So to correct it, straighten the MCP and align it parallel to the IR. So moving next is the alignment. So the alignment between the collimation and the cassette is can be determined because there is no evidence of collimation because there is no forebody of collimation. And the alignment between patient and cassette is incorrect because the distance between the central structures to the edges of the film of the superior and inferior is equal, but the left and right border is not equal distance. So the alignment between collimation and patient is can be determined because there is no evidence of collimation because there is no forebody of collimation. So the centering point for this radiograph is can be determined because there is no forebody of collimation. The standard centering point is at the mid scapular humeral joint which is here. Moving next is the collimation. So in the orange box that I colored is the superior border. In the white one is the lateral border and the yellow one is the inferior border. So at the superior border, structures that should be included are the superior scapula. This is the superior of the scapula, superior angle of the scapula, the clavicle, the coracoid and the acromion clavicular joint. This is the acromion clavicular joint. So at the lateral border, structures that should be included are the greater tubercle, the glenoid cavity, and a part of the scapula body. So at the inferior border, structures that should be included are the proximal of the humerus, the ribs, and the inferior of the scapula. So there is no radi there is no evidence of radiation protection apparatus seen in the radiograph. So, so for exposure factor, um, for a thin structure we evaluate the acromion, but for the thick structure we can choose to evaluate either coracoid or the glenoid fossa. So this is the coracoid and here is the glenoid fossa, but I use the coracoid. So for our exposure factor, the KVP use for penetration and radiographic contrast is adequate because the bony cortical outline of the thin structure, which is the acromion, can be seen. And the bony cortical outline of the thick structure, which is the coracoid, also can be seen. So for the density, the MAS use for this radiographic detail and density is adequate because the thin structure, which is the acromion, can be seen. And the bony trapecular pattern of the thick structure, which, which is the coracoid, also can be seen. So no changes are required. So moving next is the markers. So there is evidence of a 
anatomical lead marker shown in the radiograph here. It is not a digital marker. It is correctly placed on the right superior side of the body and it is placed appropriately and not superimposing any region of the interest. So for aesthetic, the film size is 24 times 30 cm, which is sufficient to demonstrate all structures of the interest and there is no evidence of the artifact on the radiograph. So for name and identification, the patient's name, ID, date of examination, place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph. So if we need to visualize them, we can put it at the superior right border of the radiograph and make sure it does not superimpose any region of interest. So for the conclusion here, the radiograph is unacceptable because there is no evidence of the patient's name, ID, date and place of examination and there is evidence of the patient's upper MCP is tilted anteriorly. So we need to repeat the examination. So that's all. And here are the references that I use. So for more information and detail about the AP shoulder, you guys can go and see um, these reference that I already attached. So thank you for watching and have a good day.